Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Bridget and I'm here to answer all your art questions. I want to give you the confidence you need to make that work of art you've been dreaming of. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw anything you want using some basic principles. Today, I'll be drawing a rose. I promise it's not scary. Here's what you need to begin. A pencil, a pen, an eraser, and a sharpener. Begin by warming up. I like to draw circles on a spare sheet of paper. They don't have to be perfect. Consider this like doing arm circles before a workout. You're preparing your body for the task of drawing. In this section, I'm showing you the various techniques that I'll be using. Flower petals come in many unfamiliar shapes, so I start by drawing a basic shape that I am familiar with. In this case, it's a half circle. I draw really lightly so you can barely see this line. This makes it easier to erase and draw on top of without getting distracted. 80% of drawing is actually looking, so I'll be following a reference photo of this flower that I found on Pinterest. With a light hand, I follow the outline of the petal, using my half circle as a guide. Flower petals are light and wispy, so I'm making sure my lines show that. I'm keeping my hand light and my arm movement smooth. To get all the folds and crevices of a flower, you have to really look at it and pay attention. Go slow and constantly check your reference photo. Don't let your brain make up stuff when you can look at your reference right in front of you. To erase sketchy lines, use an eraser with a clean edge. This will help get really close to the line you want to keep without erasing it. To erase larger sections, use a dull part of the eraser. There are also kneadable erasers out there where you can fold and shape the eraser into the form you need, and these are really cool and handy, but they get dirty really quickly, so they're not my favorite. If you need a clean edge, you could probably take scissors to a regular eraser, although that is a pretty risky move, so be careful. Using my fine-tipped pen, I'm tracing the lines that I'm happy with and want to keep. To get used to the pen, I'm starting in the shadow parts. That way I can get a feel for how easy or hard it is to make things darker. Remember, with pen, you can always go darker, but you can't go lighter. I suggest practicing on a separate piece of paper beforehand. To make light lines, I'm using a light hand with the pen on its side. I don't necessarily recommend this technique for all pens, as the tips have different shapes. For example, this pen has a square tip, not a ballpoint like one you would write with, so the ink comes out differently. Again, practice beforehand and really know your pen. To show crinkles in the petal and to gradually add value, that is, shading, I'm using little ticks and varying their lengths. You can go over an area multiple times to build up the darkness. Here I'm showing you shading with a pencil. I don't suggest using a mechanical pencil for shading because you can't control it as well. I use the pencil on its side to disperse pressure and cover more surface area. Using a light hand, I go over the parts that I want to be darker multiple times. These are similar principles to using a pen. But the nice thing about pencils is if you make a mistake, you can erase it. Unless you press too hard, so always keep your hand light. You can soften any harsh pencil lines by rubbing your finger over those areas. I don't do this very often, if ever, because it takes away contrast, that is, when light and dark are right next to each other. People are often afraid of contrast when they draw because it's more eye-catchy, but we want our flower to be eye-catchy, so don't be afraid to leave dark parts dark and light parts light. Now I'm going to show you how to use color. 
Using all the same principles as before, a pencil crayon operates similarly to a pencil. If you use the tip, you will get a bolder color, whereas if you use the side, you will get a lighter color and more of the paper will show through. Only with pencil crayon, you can't really erase it like you can with pencil, so start lighter and go darker. Where you hold your pen, pencil, or pencil crayon also makes a difference. If you hold it closer to the tip, you're more likely to press harder and create a bolder line, but you'll have more control. If you hold it from the end, you're more likely to use less pressure, but you'll have less control. Now that I've covered these basics, we'll take a look at how it all comes together. First, I'm marking out where I want my piece to be on the page, and in that space, I am drawing the basic shapes that I need. If I didn't do this, I would risk making my piece too big or too small for the page. I'm sorry that you can't really see the lines that I'm drawing, but it shows just how lightly I'm pressing. I'll switch angles in a minute so you can see better. Here you can see I'm following the steps I outlined before. I'm drawing lightly, starting with basic shapes and adding details slowly. I've sped up the footage of the complete drawing process so it could fit into a reasonably length video. In real time, it took me about an hour. Roses can be really intimidating to draw, but trust me, they aren't as scary as they seem when you really look at them. Keep looking, practice observing, and watch what each line and fold does. In particular, the center of the rose can be the most intimidating part, so take your time and relax. If you make a mistake, it's honestly not that big of a deal. Unless your viewers are biologists, no one is going to notice if you don't get every fold right. Art does not have to be our idea of perfect. Mistakes don't break a work of art. Art often takes on a life of its own, especially when we let our mistakes be. I lost some footage here, but I showed you what I did earlier with layering the small ticks of varying lengths so you didn't miss much. I'm doing the same thing here. In my undergrad, we were obsessed with trying to make our works look photorealistic. But our painting professor, who had been in the art world for like well over 30 years, he was the head of our program, in all his wisdom, he told us that photorealistic paintings were uninteresting. Which is hilarious because literally everybody loves photorealistic paintings and drawings. But he said, let your paintings be paintings. If you want a photograph of something, then take a photograph. <laughs> but paint says something different. Similarly, I think this principle applies to all art. Your art does not have to look like a copy-paste of reality. 
It can look like a drawing, or a painting, or whatever it is, and it can still be very captivating. Your mistakes in art are not wrong. To quote Bob Ross, they are happy little accidents. You can let them be, or you can fix them. Literally, it's up to you. It's your art. Here are all the colors that I used for the flower. In the stem, I mostly used the cooler colors, light blue, light green, green, dark green, and blue. For the petals, I used the warmer colors, reds, orange, and yellow. I'm using the pencil crayon on its side, pressing lightly and using the lighter colors first. I start with yellow to put in the highlights, followed by the light green, dark green, then blue for the shadows and the darkest parts. When I move to the next color, I never cover up the first colors entirely. I want them all to show and have their moment. When you layer using pencil crayon, always use a light hand and with the pencil on its side. When you want something to be darker, rotate between the two or three colors you are using, gradually applying more pressure each time. This is where you can have a lot of fun building up the color. Just remember, when you layer the colors, you change the color. Yellow and blue make green, yellow and red make orange, and red and blue make purple. Red, yellow, and blue make brown. I have to admit, once I had my flower fully drawn, I wanted to color it how I wanted to color it because it's my art and I can do what I want. So I stopped following the reference photo. You can take your own creative liberties too. I decided to make this flower yellow, orange, and red, partially because I thought it would look better and partially to demonstrate color mixing. That's it for this video. Feel free to check out and follow me on Instagram, at Bridget Pool Artist. If you decide to make your own drawing like this, tag me so I can see it. Use the hashtag ArtWithBridget so we can all share our drawings with each other. Thanks for joining me today and make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so I can see you in my next video. Bye!